at AKFC Supercoaches. Still a game or two to go in round six, but I think we can look back at who was hot and who was cold and start thinking about what we're going to do for round seven. So let's get into it. It has been another brutal round, I know, for a lot of KFC super coaches out there. But let's think about the positives. Started on an absolutely fantastic note on Friday night. If you had the captaincy on Marcus Bontempelli, went bananas against Frio. 182 KFC super coach points. That's absolutely massive. That's 360 or something if you double it for your captaincy, which will lock in in a couple of days for a lot of people, hopefully, which is great. Now, we had that game a few weeks ago. We know where Bont looked fantastic, but he turned the ball over. He gave away a heap of free kicks. This time, he had the 31 disposals, 25 of them were effective. No silly free kicks or anything like that. So all these disposals, you know, led to something positive, and that's what the KFC Supercoach scorers love. Ten tackles as well and two goals. So a complete game from the Bont, and hopefully a lot of us had the captaincy on him. This guy has been a bit frustrating if you picked him at the start of the year or jumped on after round one, as a few people did after a massive score to start the year. Stephen Cornelio from the Giants. He's been a little bit up and down since then, a little bit frustrating, butchering the ball a bit, giving away frees like the Bond did uh, on that one occasion, costing himself some points. But he was fantastic on the weekend, 136 points from 38 disposals, uh, eight tackles, 15 contested. That's where he gets a lot of his super coach points from now. So that's fantastic if you had him in your team. And if you didn't have him, definitely has to be on the radar because before that game, he dropped over $70,000 from his starting price. It was under 500 grand. Uh, he obviously had a good score on the weekend, but I think he'll still be that cheap going into this week. So if there's a way to manufacture to get him into your team, maybe trade out some of those rookies who are starting to hit the wall, he's definitely one I would be looking at. And I want to give a shout out this week to Jack Zebel. Mid-price success story. Uh, there haven't been a heap of those this year. We've had a few that haven't quite paid off as well as we would hope. But Jack, going back into defence, just doing what he loves best. I know there was a uh, bit of concern out there when Aaron Hall came into the Kangaroos team that he might pinch some of Zebel's points. He did take a few kick-ins, but didn't seem to really bother. Jack still managed to score the 111 points, uh, 23 disposals, 20 of them are kicks, which is exactly what we love. Going at nearly 80% disposal efficiency. And what's so good about Zebel is he only had the two turnovers, no freeze again, so he's not costing himself any points like that. So I think Zebel is shaping as a potential keeper this year. I mean, the way injuries have been going, we might not be able to trade out all our cheapies and mid prices uh, before the end of the season. So he's my one we can pr probably hang on to and rely on to get a good score every week. Now, who was cold in round six? Again, unfortunately, no shortage of candidates to choose from here. And we'll start with Errol Goulden against the Cats on Saturday night. Obviously, pretty much nothing went right for Sydney. They got smashed right from the opening bounce. That certainly didn't help his cause. And he had a really poor start. He was on about five or six points at quarter time. And the game was basically over by then. So the way the KFC Supercoach scoring system works, you are rewarded when the game is up for grabs. And things you might do later in the game when it's all over don't necessarily count as much. So it really hurt. Good in that he gave away some free kicks early, you know, missed, he had a couple of shots of goal and missed them both. Um, he only had 16 disposals for the night. They're all kicks, so we like that, but only 50% disposal efficiency, seven turnovers, and he gave away four free kicks, all of them in the first half, as I say, when they cost him the most. So that's his first really poor game. And he hasn't had the uh, massive, uh, nearly 200 point score that we saw in the preseason yet, but I wouldn't be jumping off him just yet, but uh, hopefully not too many more like that, please. Now we're getting to the category of just really, really bad luck, which there's been a lot of in KFC Supercoach this year. If you had uh, copped some of this on the weekend, you're certainly not the only one, and everyone's having to deal with these issues, so hopefully that provides some solace, uh, and there'll be some ways to get out of this, which we can talk about during the week. But if you traded in Tuke Miller, I mean, I would have recommended him as a trade option last week. I really liked the idea of getting him in before a good run for the Suns. He scored 100 in every game this year. It was a decent price. You know, he just looked like uh, he ticked all the boxes. Started a bit slowly against North, which was a little bit concerning, and then he hobbles off with a knee injury. So only the 40 points, absolutely horrible luck, if you, especially if you just traded him in or if you'd had him since the start of the year. Now, Tuke said after the game he didn't think it was too bad. He doesn't think it's an ACL. I guess we'll find out in the next couple of days. But it seems certain that he'll miss a game or two at least, um, probably a few more. So that means um, trading him out. Fortunately, there are a few candidates in the midfield. You can grab someone good to replace him. And the unluckiest players of the round was anyone who traded in Tuke Miller and Matt Roberts. I know there were a lot of people who did that. Roberts was the most traded in player last week. More than 50,000 KFC super coaches traded him in after his great score last week for the Swans. Then he started really slowly um, on the bench a lot in the first quarter, and then it got worse from there. 
for all of us and particularly for him when he did a knee injury in the second quarter, subbed out of the game uh, with just the 19 points, which was an absolute disaster, really. Um, a lot of us had him on the field, including me. So um, now we have the issue where we have another dead rookie. He'll go up in price a tiny bit, but we think he'll be out for a long time and he's just kind of sitting there not doing anything. And if you've already got a Campbell Chesser or a Charlie Constable type who's still playing well in the VFL, but hard to get back into that Suns team. Um, there's a lot of these sort of dead rookies piling up on the bench. We want our rookies scoring points for us and also earning money. So um, we don't want any more situations like this. Fingers crossed Matty Roberts can come back at some stage this year. Really rotten luck for him. And hopefully we get no more issues like this in KFC Supercoach.